gone. How to get back in? Uh, it's not a matter of getting back in. It's a matter, Tim, that three plus months later, uh, people didn't remember that George Tenet had asked that it be taken out of the Cincinnati speech, and then it was cleared by the agency. The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. Just 16 words in the State of the Union address, words that we now know were misleading. And retired career diplomat Joe Wilson tried to warn the administration of just that nearly a year before the speech. I, uh, I received a call from, um, from the CIA uh, in February 2002, and I was invited out to talk to those people within the broader intelligence community who deal with uh, three different subjects, Iraq, um, uranium, and Niger. Uh, I briefed them on what I knew about the uranium business. It was during the course of that briefing that they said that they had received a report that had piqued the, the interest of the office of the vice president, and that report was of a purported memorandum of agreement uh, authorizing the sale of uranium yellow cake, somewhat enriched uranium, from Niger to, uh, to Iraq, and it was a document that was executed by the government of Niger. They asked me if I would be willing to go out and take another look at it and talk to people I knew there. I left, um, I left there telling them that if they wanted I would be able to free up my schedule. They subsequently called me and said, please do. I'd spent the eight days there drinking, uh, drinking mint tea and talking to everybody there was to talk to who knew anything about the subject matter in uh, Niamey. And I'd come back uh, persuaded that it did not have happened. One, uh, from a business perspective, because of the way the consortium was structured, you just couldn't do it without a lot of people knowing. And two, the way the government bureaucracy was structured, you could not make the decision without a lot of people knowing. And if you made the decision, the decision would be reflected in a series of, docu a series of signatures on the, on the documents. And if the documents did not contain those signatures, they could not be authentic uh, government of Niger documents. The president quoted a British paper. Um, we did not know at the time. Uh, no one knew at the time in our circles. Maybe someone knew down in the, the bowels of the agency, but no one in our circles knew uh, that there were doubts and suspicions that this might be a forgery. Um, of course, it was information that was mistaken. But the, uh, it was a relatively small part of the case about uh, nuclear weapons and nuclear reconstitution. It is also the case that the broad picture about um, Iraq's programs was uh, a picture that went very far back in time. Now, given what I knew about where the question had originated, um, and given what I knew about the way the government works, I knew that um, people in her circle did know. Based on thorough analysis, <coughs> the IA has concluded with the, with the concurrence of outside experts that these documents, which form the basis for the reports of recent urani uranium transaction between Iraq and Niger, are in fact not authentic. Numerous French words were misspelled in the documents. One of the letters was signed by a Niger official who had left office 10 years ago. Several dates in the documents did not match the day of the week. Several of the names and titles of officials mentioned in the documents were incorrect. We all know that the documentation on yellow cake from Niger was a fake, but why doesn't anybody say who did it, who faked the document, and why don't we take another look then at the same stream of consciousness that was, that was prevailing at that moment on the aluminum tubes and and uh, the, the, uh, even the trailers, the bioweapons uh, uh, trailers that were so ballyhooed. At that point, someone's got to say, who is putting this intelligence out there and why? And, and I don't think that question's been answered, and maybe because the answer is known, and it's not a pleasant one. Who was it that asked for this review of the Niger nuclear material question? It was the vice president. Uh, Mr. Wilson, former ambassador, was sent to Niger uh, in response to the vice president's questions about this issue. So, assumedly, the vice president got a report back in response to his question, and that report contained the Wilson memo, his assessment of the situation. Uh, the question remains, who did the document? Who forged the document? Uh, and why? Uh, you know, the list is po possibly short. Uh, somebody ought to be able to work on that. Wilson says his family is the subject of a smear campaign by senior administration officials. 
they deliberately leaked his wife's identity as a covert CIA operative, damaging her future career and compromising past missions, after he criticized the administration on Meet the Press and in the New York Times. The White House hatchet men came out and started writing, started writing articles in which they basically said that uh, Wilson, um, well the first one came out and said that Wilson told the truth because he's a Democrat. Um, well, set that up as an argument. Democrats tell the truth, ergo Republicans fill in the blank. Uh, then then uh, uh, a couple of senior administration officials leaked to Bob Novak that, that my wife uh, was a CIA operative involved in the weapons of mass destruction uh, business at the CIA. Senior administration officials is a key to being very, it's typically the, the president, vice president, uh, cabinet officers, and the top of the White House had gone out of their way to get that information out. Not only told Novak, told Time Magazine, they wanted that information out. Now, that's against a statutory law that prohibits the identification of CIA operatives. What you're doing when you expose a CIA op uh, uh, officer of any name you're, you're basically taking their entire career and flushing it down the toilet. It also has the potential of placing that person in jeopardy because of their operations and their own operations and people they have operated with in jeopardy. So it is a very vengeful act against the ambassador to try to hurt him by hurting his wife's career, if not wishing her physical damage. I have never seen a dirty trick that could be a hit. A president of the United States and an administration who has come to office on a platform of restoring dignity and honor to the White House. What they did was neither dignified, nor was it terribly honorable, nor was it germane to the issue at hand. First of all, it should be noted that Colin Powell's speech to the United Nations was theater, a masterful theater, effective theater at the time. Um, you know, here's a man who has tremendous credibility, uh, who presents himself to the Security Council, to the American people, to the international public, and stares the camera in the eye and says he knows Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Leaving Saddam Hussein in possession of weapons of mass destruction for a few more months or years is not an option. My first visual impression here, uh, watching George Tenet, the head of the Central Intelligence Agency, uh, back there as a prop, uh, almost like a, a potted plant, uh, as if to say that the Central Intelligence Agency stands behind, or in this case sits behind everything that Colin Powell says, that was a terrific blow to the morale of the Central Intelligence Agency analysts. Saddam Hussein has chemical weapons. Chemical weapons, although they can be very deadly in a subway station or something like this, are not really strategic weapons. They are weapons that can kill 50, 100, 200 people, but in fact they won't devastate you the way a nuclear weapon in New York City or Chicago or someplace would be a, a deadly blow. Saddam Hussein has used these horrific weapons on another country and on his own people. He used uh, weapons, uh, Saddam Hussein did back in the 1980s, when the U.S. administration, the Reagan administration, was actually supporting him and allowing him to, to import the, uh, the chemical precursors for that. Donald Rumsfeld, actually, as a special envoy for Ronald Reagan back in those years, helped, you know, open the door for better relations between Washington and Baghdad. Colin Powell spoke of thousands of liters of anthrax that were unaccounted for. He said they're probably hiding it. And then he held up a little vial of white powder. And he said, a couple teaspoonfuls of white powder like this, if launched against American cities, could kill thousands of Americans. If he was truly to reflect the Iraqi capability, he would have held up a, a bottle of Diet Coke and said the Iraqis produced anthrax that looked like this. And it has a shelf life of three years. The last known production batch came out in 1991. So even if Iraq was hiding this brown sludge liquid, it would be useless today. Just a few weeks ago, we intercepted communications between two commanders in Iraq's 
2nd Republican Guard Corps. If you know anything about Iraq, they have very strict communication security procedures. So you would never have military personnel speaking in the clear over a radio about sensitive subjects. On the left is a close-up of one of the four chemical bunkers. There were never any chemical weapons in that facility. I'm intimately familiar with that facility. I've inspected it a number of times. Other ins inspectors have inspected it many more times than I have. To believe they were proof is to believe the statement that Iraq would put its crown jewels in the, in the one building or one of the few buildings that either the United States will bomb first or the inspectors will go to first. The truck you also see is a signature item. It's a decontamination vehicle. The UN weapons inspectors knew that the trucks shown by Colin Powell in those photographs were fire trucks, not decontamination trucks. I would uh, have to comment here on uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell's uh, debut as an imagery analyst. It was highly embarrassing for those of us who know something about the business. Uh, we couldn't tell whether this was an honest mistake by those who now do the imagery analysis, who now report to the Secretary of Defense, unlike our day when they reported to the Central Intelligence Agency. Whether that was the case or whether uh, perhaps uh, uh, Colin Powell was being set up. From our point of view, I mean, we do all kinds of analysis of satellite imagery. Um, you can't form any conclusions on what's going on inside the building. They could have been building tractors. They could have been doing nothing inside that facility. Now look at the picture on the right. You are now looking at two of those sanitized bunkers. The signature vehicles are gone. It's been cleaned up and it was done on the 22nd of December as the UN inspection team is arriving. Contamination vehicles, they rotate from site to site. And so the absence of the vehicle on the second photo, which we know is the 22nd of December, could just as easily be explained by the normal rotation because you didn't tell us the date of the first and it was several weeks before. We have noted that the two satellite images of the site were taken several weeks apart. The reported movement of munitions at the site could just as easily have been a routine activity as a movement of prescribed munitions in anticipation of imminent inspection. We have first-hand descriptions of biological weapons factories on wheels and on rails. These mobile labs that you've been shown to be nothing more than hydrogen generation facilities. Here you see both truck and rail car mounted mobile factories. When you take a look at the mobile labs that Colin Powell uh, discussed, he didn't put up photographs of these facilities, he put up artist renditions of these facilities. Why? Because we have no proof they exist. This video of an Iraqi test flight obtained by UNSCOM some years ago shows an Iraqi F-1 Mirage jet aircraft. Note the spray coming from beneath the Mirage. That is 2,000 liters of simulated anthrax. Iraqis continued to visit bin Laden in his new home in Afghanistan. George Tenet's analysts had spent a year and a half of torturous investigation, uh, torturous analysis, to see if there were ties between Al-Qaeda and Iraq. They found none. Our conservative estimate is that Iraq today has a stockpile of between 100 and 500 tons of chemical weapons agent. So the Secretary of State is telling us that uh, our conservative estimate is that Iraq possesses between 100 and 500 tons of chemical weapons agent, enough to fill 16,000 uh, warheads on the battlefield. Um, where are they? What happened to them? My suspicion is that this is not our conservative estimate, that this sounds very much to me like our neoconservative estimate. Iraqi denials of supporting terrorism take their place alongside the other Iraqi denials of weapons of mass destruction. It is all a web of lies. It was a masterful performance, but none of it was true. Where are all these weapons? Where is all this VX? Where is all the anthrax? Probably one of the low points uh, in his long and distinguished uh, 